Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 1st of December. PM Modi offers to host COP33 in 2028 in India. Good and appropriate, US welcomes India's high-level probe over foiled assassination plot. And we are resident naval power in Indian Ocean, says Indian Navy chief over Chinese activities. And now for all the details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing an opening session of COP28 summit in Dubai on Friday, proposed the idea of hosting COP33 in 2028 in India and noted that India contributes less than 4% to global carbon emissions. PM Modi highlighted that New Delhi had achieved its emission intensity targets 11 years ahead of the committed time frame and remained on track to achieve its nationally determined contribution targets. He further added that India has presented a model of development to the world, striking a great balance between ecology and economy. Today, I will say that in 2028, the COP33 summit will host the COP33 summit in the world. मुझे आशा है कि आने वाले 12 दिनों में ग्लोबल स्टॉक टेक की समीक्षा से हमें सुरक्षित और उज्जवल भविष्य का रास्ता मिलेगा। The 28th edition of the Climate Change Conference, which began on Thursday, will run till 12th of December. PM Modi will hold a series of bilateral meetings and will be part of two special initiatives on climate events during his two-day stay. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has welcomed India's decision of setting up a high-level committee to probe the involvement of an Indian national in the foiled plot to kill Khalistani terrorist Gurpantwan Singh Pannu. During a press conference, Blinken called the decision appropriate and good and said the U.S. is looking forward to see the results. This comes a day after the U.S. Department of Justice released an indictment against 52-year-old Nikhil Gupta with charges of murder for plotting to kill Pannu. I can say that this is something we take very seriously. Um, a number of us um, have raised this directly with the Indian government. Uh, in, uh, in past weeks, uh, the government announced today that it was uh, conducting an investigation, uh, and that's good and appropriate. And we India had earlier informed that U.S. had shared some inputs pertaining to a nexus between organized criminals, gun runners, terrorists, and others during the course of recent discussions on India-U.S. security cooperation. India has complained about the presence of six separatist groups overseas, including in Canada and the US. Moving on, addressing the annual press conference ahead of the Navy Day celebrations, Indian Navy Chief Admiral R. Hari Kumar on Friday termed India as the resident naval power of the Indian Ocean region. Admiral Kumar, who was responding to a query on Chinese activities in the Indian Ocean region, said that while China may have legitimate reason to be present in the region, India as a resident power is aware about the happenings and has deployed its assets to keep the extra-regional force under surveillance. In the past few years, China has tried to grow dominance in the Indian backyard, particularly among its smaller neighbors like Sri Lanka and Maldives. New Delhi fears rise of Chinese influence in the Indian Ocean region could hamper its security interests. Uh, China may have a legitimate you know, reason to uh, be present in the Indian Ocean region for economic activities. But uh, what we, uh, as the resident naval power in the Indian Ocean, we keep an eye on what all is happening there. We try to keep uh, uh, the, uh, the extra-regional forces which are present in the region under surveillance and we would like to know what are their activities, what are they engaged in, uh, 
and uh, what are the intentions and so on. An Islamabad High Court judged this week lashed authorities over rising cases of enforced disappearance and warned that if the missing people were not found, the court would order an FIR against caretaker Prime Minister, local media reported. Hearing a case about disappearance of around 50 below students, Justice Mohsin Akhtar Kayani said that it was disturbing that state institutions were being accused of their disappearance. When these questions arise internationally, we have no answers, the judge noted. A senior government official informed that 22 Baloch students had been found with efforts underway for the recovery of 28 others. Activists have long blamed Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abduction by the Pakistani state. The next hearing in the matter will be held on 10th of January. Amid the Taliban claim to take charge of Afghanistan Embassy in New Delhi, Afghan diplomats on Thursday asserted their allegiance to the Afghan Republic as they assumed charge of the diplomatic mission in Delhi. Assuming the leadership of Afghan Embassy, Acting Consul General for Afghanistan in Mumbai and Hyderabad, Zakia Vardak and Saeed Mohammad Ibrahim Khil said they held discussions with Indian authorities to keep the embassy operational to cater to the needs of the Afghan diaspora in India. Our presence is dedicated to serve and resolve the challenges faced by Afghans in the region, they said. The development comes a day after Taliban's Deputy Foreign Minister Sher Mohammad Abbas Tarikzai claimed the de facto administration is in talks with the Indian government to assume charge of the embassy in Delhi. However, India has not recognized the Taliban government yet. And Maya Gurang and Surendra Pandey, who became the first same-sex couple to get their marriage registered in Nepal, have expressed their joy and have vowed to fight for rights of the LGBTQ plus community. A report. Posing for photographs along with their marriage registration certificate, which is not less than a match trophy, Maya Gurang and Surendra Pandey, Nepal's first gay couple to have got recognition of their marriage, are rejoicing the victory. The couple had got married according to Hindu rituals in 2016 and had to fight a long legal battle for the recognition. Their marriage was registered temporarily at the Dordi Rural Municipality Office on Wednesday, five months after the Supreme Court issued an interim order clearing the way for such marriages in the largely conservative country. <laughs> The couple earlier could not open a joint account, register business and purchase land. They now plan to work for the empowerment of the sexual minorities. With the development, Nepal has now become the second country to legalize same-sex marriage in Asia, where societies remain largely conservative. Scores of tourists are thronging the scenic ski resort town of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir as the region has received fresh snowfall this week. Gulmarg, at an altitude of 8,500 feet, is a bowl-shaped plateau of a lush green meadow surrounded by thick forest. It provides a picture postcard look with snow-capped mountains in winters. Covered from head to toe in winter wear, tourists are visiting the region for skiing and snowboarding. Mesmerized by its scenic beauty, they express their admiration for the place. आज जो हमने फोटो में देखा था आज हमारा सपना पूरा हो गया है हम यहाँ पे आए हम यहाँ के हसीन वादियाँ देख रहे हैं वो देखके हम बहुत खुश हैं एक्सपीरियंस करने आए थे तो रात के वक्त यहाँ पे पूरा ग्रीनरी दी था तो हमको स्नोफॉल एक्सपीरियंस करना था तो अचानक कि हम आज देख रहे मॉर्निंग में तो स्नोफॉल और जिसे कहते हैं ना कि जन्नत देखना हो तो कश्मीर आओ गुलमर्ग आओ तो वही प्लेस है जन्नत देखना तो यहाँ जन्नत 
Tourism is the mainstay of the economy of the region and Kashmir with its pristine beauty is often called the heaven on earth. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.